Hey guys, Clawwolf here, and I'm back today with something pretty interesting, as the title may suggest. This is kind of another way to do text in Java Edition Minecraft. Um, I don't know anything about PE Edition if you're showing up from PE, so um, I don't know if you guys have Telra or Slash Say or Scoreboard, so it's definitely a lot harder to do it on there, but this is the best thing I could come up with for Java Edition using functions, because as you may know, um, or I've tried this. So what I normally do is I set up like a big cube underground out of um, out of like glowstone and stuff. And then I have like all these command blocks if you've seen in my maps and they're like this and they have a pressure plate and it teleports a armor stand along them and they activate text like, right? Makes sense, right? And then there's also a click event in the chat. Um, some people complain about that, which I solved that in this one too. Um, the problem is in 1.12, they made, I. I don't know what they did, but they basically made redstone laggier, and they made uh, these the armor stand movements like this way laggy. So I decided to make a new version that is not as easy to make because this one all you had to do was just uh, put in the Telra here and then just code it so that the armor stand just teleports to the beginning of the text sequence, and then there you go, easy. Um, this one you have to do a couple uh, things in the text in the text file that I'll show you. Um, but it's pretty simple, it's not too bad. Anyway, so first you want this villager. I decided to make it right click anywhere and it'll activate. So this is just a villager with a tag of text as we had before, an armor stand with a tag of text. And he is a uh, generic villager, so he has no trades. And he is on a team of no collision. And he is invisible. There you go. So I already spawned him if I go into game mode three, you can see him right there. Then you're going to need a bunch of these. And I'll have the, um, the, uh, a link to the function thing and I'll show you how to put it in as well. Um, you're going to need these which will be in the description. You can just copy and paste. Uh, um, you can just copy and paste them into your world and activate them. Uh, but this is a, you need a text. So this is kind of simulating the, um, the 3D kind of teleporting the armor stand in a 2D way. So we have text which would which is a scoreboard that signifies where you are on like which command block you technically are on um, which is dummy and then you have one called line which signifies which line you're on whether you're on this line of chat or this line of chat or whatever um, so you have text in line and then you also have uh, advance which tests for when the player clicks on the um, villager and then you have no collision which is just the team and then it gives the team collision will never and then you're going to do game loop function text colon general. So, um, and I'll explain what you can do alternatively as well for making a map because that's not really special. Anyway, so I'm going to click this button to reset it. Um, all players should start with a line of zero and text of zero, but it doesn't need to be zero. It can be have nothing on the scoreboard. So you don't even need to set anything up for the player. Um, so let me just show you a quick demonstration of what happens. So when you want a the next line to play, so this actually kind of helps play lines in order. Um, but if you want the next line to play, you set the player's advanced score to negative one. That's what I have set up. So anytime you have like a command block that tests for if a player is standing in the right spot, then it has this going into it and you want the next text to play. You just put this command, which will be in the description, set advanced negative one, or you can type it yourself, it's really easy. And you just put it in the command block. That is the wrong, <laughs> you just put it in the command block and once it triggers, it will, um, I, I'll just do test for add a, it'll start the text sequence. So when I go like this and I go like that, as you can see in the chat, it's smaller. It says hi, cause my chats shrink down. It says hi. Now I can right click to advance. I can walk around. I can't actually interact with very many things unless I'm walking. Um, so it says hi, click it again. How are you? Okay. Now we'll go on to the next chat. Here is some chat. There you go. So now that is where it actually ends. That's the last text that I wanted to display. So if I go into game mode three, the villager is back where he started and I'm all good. Now, if I activate something again, so let's say I go somewhere else, here you go. Now it's on a different one. It's green now. It says, hello. Oh, this is another chats. And then if I, that's the last one I wanted. So now he's back here and there you go. So that's just how it works. Pretty simple. You can put, um, I would put the last chat as a tip so people know that it's the end of the chat or maybe a little thing that says end of chat. I don't know what you do. That's just what I like to do. Um, so let's go over how the functions work. So I'm going to back out here. So you're going to go to your saves. You're going to go to your world, your adventure map, whatever. You're going to go into the world file. You're going to go into data and you're going to go into functions. And then I will have a zip file that says text 
and it's going to be text.zip or um, something like that. And you put it in here, and you'll have the, you put the zip folder in here, and you extract it, um, and you'll have this little text folder. And what you want to do is go in it, so it'll just have text and general, and I'll keep the hey, this is a text. I'll have like the things, the example there, so you can mess with it. Um, so if you if you're in your world and you have already have a game loop function that you want to run constantly because you're only allowed to have one game loop function all you have to do is just let me show you so all you have to do is open the general copy all these and paste them into the game loop function that you already have running constantly uh, they just need these commands in the right order in a game loop function um, because if you're a more if you're using like if you want to also have a bazooka in your map uh, and it requires a bunch of functions to be played and one to be constantly played you're, you don't want to switch between them, so you can put them all in the same function. But let's go over exactly how this works. So you're going to ignore this for now, because this is... Um, well, actually, no, I can talk about it. So when the player gets their score of advance set to negative 1, it adds a tag of chat. Then it teleports the text of villager to anybody with the tag of chat. So it does this. Um, now, you may want to... If it's a multiplayer map, I really suggest that you... You um, instead of doing tag at set at a advance negative one, you do set at a tag equals leader, and you just pick one player to be the leader or something like that, because it doesn't really work for multiple people. Uh, only one person can advance the chat. Um, so then it is also if they have negative one, it is adding one to their line number. So it's like you're going up another line, you're going over one in the text line, and then if and then it also sets their text back to zero. So you're going back to the beginning of the chain. So here is this. And let's pretend you just got through a chain, or maybe you didn't at all, and your armor stand is at the end, which signifies a text of 1, 2, 3, 4, and a line of 1. Uh, then when it comes over here, it needs to come back, so the text needs to be set to 0. The line needs to be added by 1, because now you're one line over. You're in line number 2. So line number 1, now you're in line number 2, and text needs to come back to the beginning of the text chain, which is 0. Okay? Don't know if I need to do that. Anyway, so, um, and then also it sets your advance to one. Now it sets your advance to one because it wants to start the chat immediately. If I didn't set it to one, then what would happen would be the villager would be teleporting to you and it would wait until you click him to activate the text. But usually you don't want that to happen. So then if the text is one, so let's say the chat has been started, if the advance is one, it's going to add one to the text. So this is where the zero position is in my commands. So here's text of zero line of one, here's text of zero, line of two, here's text of one, the first text. Okay, so it adds one to the text every time that the player clicks on a villager, or when it first starts. So the advance is when you click on a villager, but it also sets it to one when you first start the line. So adds one to the text, um, and then it executes at the text, and executes at anybody who has clicked him nearby, that way it just specifically tells, oh, the player has picked the player has the chat at him and he's ready to do some text that way if you have some other spot with a villager in the map that you need to right click it won't get confused um so then it plays the function at the player who is advancing the text it plays text colon text um, which is this function here so now it jumps into this one so by the time you get down to here you should have like a text score of one and a line score of one if you haven't done anything so Here's what my format that I use for this. I do all these hashtags line one so I know what line I'm on. So line one, line two, I could do line three, line four, line five, line six, line seven, and there will probably be like a hundred lines for the adventure map. Um, I'll show you an alternate way you can do to have less lag if you have a lot of lines. Um, anyway, so execute at s tag equals chats. So this is going to execute at the nearest player. So it's just at, at that player who activated the command. Um, and it's seeing if they have a text of exactly one in a line of exactly one, which they do. When they first enter it, they have a text of exactly one in a line of exactly one. Then it's telling everyone hi. Then it's going to go through all these because their text is not exactly two, but their line is exactly one. Their text is not exactly three. Text is not exactly three. Text is text is exactly one, but the line is not exactly two. So they meet. They only meet the criteria for this first one. So it only plays the first one, runs through all these commands, gets to the end, and then sets their advanced score back to zero. Now that the guy is already at the player, so he's already teleported to me, all that happens is I right click him and it sets my advanced score to one. So we skip all these commands, come down to when the score is one, adds one to the text. So now I have a text score of two. 
goes into this function, checks what I meet, what criteria I meet. I meet the text score of two and line score of one. That's the only criteria I meet. And then it tells this text. And it keeps going until we get to the end. This is the last notable part. The last chat, which is a text score of three, line score of one, okay? It is going to tell the text, but then I copied it so it does something else. So if you have multiple of these execute at A and then the criteria, if you have multiple of them, it'll just do the multiple of these commands. So when they get to a text of three and a line of one, it's going to tell the text, it's going to teleport the uh, villager back to where he started, and it's going to remove the tag of chat. Really important to remove the tag of chat. That way it doesn't constantly teleport the villager to the player, which would suck because then you can't really battle. Um, and that's it. So if you want to make a new line, I'll show you an example right here real quick. Just copy this or just copy this and come down here. Maybe put line three. Line three. Paste it. And then change the place where it says two in the line to three. And you can make the text back to one or something. And then just keep adding text through here like this. Copy, paste change one to two and then you change the tell rod to whatever you want hello and then uh, put another one and we'll make it from one to three and then we'll say done and then we'll bring this back up and we'll change this to three and three and then we will change this to three and three and we'll change this to three and three awesome and then it'll say done and we'll just do it in yellow and yellow and yellow and then we just save the mc function file you can you can leave it open if you want type slash reload and then we'll reset to just go through the whole thing again hi how are you Here's some chat. Click it again. Hello, this is another chats. Click it again. This is another chats. T hello. Done. That's it. As you can see, it works pretty well. Now, if you have a lot of um, a lot of lines that you have, what I suggest is this. So you go, you do this is this is kind of like um, what I call searching. So uh, there is a name for it. I just forget the technical code name. So you create a new uh, a new MC function file called line or sorry line one and then you create a new MC function file oh we'll just do this alternatively for you line two then inside the text file ready I'm gonna copy this just so I don't get rid of it you are going to copy all these right right easy put them the line ones oh well the line one already has it but you put the line one uh, commands in their own separate file by themselves. And then in the text file, you just replace it with this. You test for if the player has a line score of exactly one, and then you do function text colon line one. Then that reduces the amount of commands that are played because it only plays however many lines you have. So if you have a hundred lines, that's only a hundred commands as opposed to, so let's say you have a hundred lines of text with 10 text in each one. That's a thousand commands that'll run every time they click advance, that sucks. Instead, you play the 100 commands for lines and then the however many extras there are for the line. Um, so we do that. And then if we have that, let's just reload, slash reload, and let's test this. So we go here, slash game mode one, slash game mode one place, okay. Hi. How are you? Here's some chat. See, it works. So you can split it into um, more files so that you can create less lag. Um, that's all that I'm going to go over for this video, guys. I think it was pretty long, probably at least 10 to 15 minutes. But if you got through this, you know now how to do some pretty good lag-free text in Minecraft that is pretty easy to edit because it's in a text file. Um, but anyways, guys, that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my maps from net. Well, most all my maps until there's something new. Um, but that's what I'll be using because it's probably the best version. If you guys thought this was useful, please leave a like. Um, if you want to see any other videos soon in particular that you like, 
go ahead and leave a comment. If you have any questions about anything, leave a comment as well. I am more than ready to help you out as soon as possible. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all later.